Now, I know it's been a while, but I've all called you back for a very special mission. As you know, we are the number one authority on PS2 games that no one remembers or cares about. And that's what we're doing again today. Uh, I remember. Uh, I wasn't aware of the concept of women until this video game came <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. I never forget. Uh, this LP will explode once you're done reading it. <laughs> Being an authority on obscure PS2 games is just being European. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I feel like you you kind of got more of those than we did. Oh, yeah, we did. Well, you know, it's because, like, one thing about our history is that we have been evolving through, you know, the release of such games as The Sniper 2. Right. Yeah, we never got the Sniper 2. You got the Sniper 2, which I think means that Europe basically won the console war. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Only war we're ever going to win against you guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we all grew up with uh, the Amiga, and so we were accustomed to bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, Super Frog really did a number on, like, video <laughs> games in Europe. Yeah. And then in the 2000s, it was Crazy Frog. We had a checklist. Is this like Sewell or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Amiga, you know, is why Europe is the serial killer capital of the world. Exactly. Oh, okay. So, this is like the longest attract mode that I've ever seen in a video game. And I think it's because, so, two things. One, this was made for the 50th anniversary of Namco's uh, creation, or like go into business, uh, a year before they had to merge with Bandai. <laughs> and also... Um, this was made not for profit, according to, like, Katsuhiro uh, Harada, but because they wanted to respect the Tekken's Nina Williams fans. So what you're saying, this is the uh, spirits within of Namco. Exactly. This is, from my understanding, from what, like, Harada and other devs have said on tech, the Tekken team, um, Nina Williams is the most popular character in Tekken and always has been. And so they made this game for the fans and it's just no other character has ever reached the same heights as Tekken's Nina Williams. <laughs> I Not even Dr. Boskanovich? <laughs> uh, uh, somehow, no. It feels weird to me because I feel like as a child playing Tekken, uh, like casually, no one cared about Nina Williams. Everyone wanted to be like Yoshimitsu or whatever. Or like Kid, yeah. the guy with the, yeah. the jaguar head. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, for a very long time, what I knew about Tekken was everyone plays Eddie because he's cheap as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, it feels a little weird because Nina doesn't feel like... Like, nothing about her, like, screams Tekken. Like, honestly, she kind of looks like... I think her name's, like, Sarah or Lara from Virtua Fighter. Like, yeah. she's also a blonde woman with a ponytail. Like, a lot of her design, uh, like, Sans body proportions feels more dead or alive to me. Yeah, I could get that. Like, the thing about Nina Williams, ultimately, is that... It is kind of hard to really gauge whether someone is Tekken or not, because Tekken is entirely about the Mishima family and how fucking bullshit the Mishima family is, mm -hmm. and everyone else is just there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they get- they fall into, like, stuff about the, the Mishima, you know, Zaibatsu or whatever, but, like, they're- again, they're just kind of there, right? Yeah. It could be anyone. Yeah, it's really all about people with pointy hair. Like, that's- that's what Tekken's about. And yeah. volcanoes. Like, that's kind of the major thing. I'm sure, like, we'll get into this later in the LP once we're, like, dying. Like, just, like, fish gasping for conversation topics. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, who do you think really should have gotten the Tekken spinoff? Oh, we'll talk about that. Okay. But first, welcome to Tekken's Nina Williams in Death by Degrees. I'm Chorps Away. I'm the JF Spade. Friend. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm Future Friends. Say your thing. I'm the JF Spade. <laughs> I'm Tayok. And welcome to a new game in espionage action. So, tell me, Chorps. What makes this game different from the other espionage games, or even the other action games? 
Uh, we'll get into that a lot later. Mostly it's controls, and second, it's that you get to play Tekken's Nina Williams. <laughs> so is this it, the Tekken version of Mortal Kombat Mythologies? Yes, I, I'd say so, yes. And it's the only one they ever uh, made. More, it's more of a Shaolin Monks. Mm, you know, we we could we could debate which of the Mortal Kombat spinoffs it's most like, but it is the one spinoff non-fighting game in the franchise. Actually, I guess it's kind of more like uh, the game where you play as Jax, like Combat Force or whatever. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, that's one you don't really hear much about. <laughs> also, it, it's espionage sort of in name only. You know, like, you do all the adventure things, you do all the action stuff, but stealth is sort of, like, throughout the world. really non-existent. Mm. I was going to ask if it's more like a spy fiction kind of thing, but yeah, I would imagine it's more combat focused. A little less spy, a little more fiction. It, yeah. It's a little uh, more, um, like, GoldenEye 007 than, yeah. like, Knight Rider or whatever. Uh, Nightfire? Yeah. Wait, they had satellites back in the 40s? No, we're not in the 40s. Oh, okay. They were just talking about <laughs> the, the 40s. Yeah, so this is just another accident happening in the Bermuda Triangle. Oh my god. They have so many. Yeah. So yeah, this takes place before Tekken 1. It is a, it is a, it is a prequel of undefined uh, time in the series because it's also non-canonical. Which feels like a cowardly move. But, yeah, you know. I was gonna say, like, that's the coward's way out. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't quite remember, because it's been a very long time since I last played a Tekken game, but was this... Since it was PS2, I imagine it, this would be around the time where Tekken had, like, these... kind of single-player, kind of PvE, almost sort of horde mode kind of modes. Oh, like Tekken Force yeah. or something? I don't quite remember. I feel like it was like an extra mode in like the mainline Tekken games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think four and five had like the Tekken Force like beat em ups in them. Mm -hmm. And this was right before five came out. Williams. I'm Alan from MI. Also, I gotta say, uh, something about Tekken that I really appreciate and think about is like, I feel like at all points they were sort of like the heavy hitters in like CGI. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I feel like going back, Tekken always has, like, looked really good. I feel like that, that was something about Namco in general, is that they always really tried to push, like, graphical fidelity while at the same time being, like, super gameplay focused. Yeah, and it's not super, like, uncanny, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean... One of the things also is that it's especially for Tekken, because Tekken 3 was, like, one of the biggest games of all fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> right? T Tekken 3 was fucking huge. It was everywhere. Yeah. Like, I I don't know how it was in America, but in Europe, like, everyone who owned a PS1 had Tekken 3 on there, and they mm -hmm. would always pick Eddie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I think that was a similar vibe here. I remember that, like... At some of the like local like huge arcades, they had this setup where you could play Tekken Three in basically like uh, like an AR sort of like zone where like you would kick and it would read and your character would do a kick. Oh, one of those things, yeah. Yeah, Sega Activator style. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How many kids like broke their neck trying to play Eddie? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have I don't remember seeing any news about it, and they kept those All alive right. as long as those archi All right. arcades were around. Uh, Boss DLP, we're redoing it. You're doing the research. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> uh, but Sharps was able to uh, pull off perfect electric wind god fists on that setup and only that setup. <laughs> yeah. I wish they uh, still had that for uh, Tekken, so whenever you'd have to like show up to AR, you'd have to bring like a baseball bat with you if, <laughs> if you were playing Negan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would be great for, like, the new tournament setup. Like, a fighting sticks are out. Um, like, just the activator pads are in. Yeah. Yeah, so as a quick recap, we are undercover in an underground fighting arena on a cruise ship uh, in a joint mission with MI6 and the, uh, CIA. And the CIA. 
I think it's very uh, fitting that you say we're undercover right as they announce her by her name. Yeah. And again, she goes by her real name. So I feel like anyone who knows she's an, an assassin already knows what's up, right? Uh-huh. Like, she doesn't hide it. Well, maybe Nina Williams is a fake name. Uh, it could be. I, I don't think it is. <laughs> yeah, no. Her her sister is also real, and she's pissed at her. She's also yeah. Williams. The, those are some of the endings that I do remember is apparently it's just a running gag of those two sisters absolutely fucking hate each other, and all of their endings are based around fucking with each other at all times. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> so, Man. this is... The death by degrees. The concept of this game is that your right stick is all of your attack commands, and you can hit in any direction to attack in any direction. Um, sort of like a, you know, like a twin like stick a shooter. Like a sexy grab by the ghoulies. Yeah. And then your left analog stick is all movement and evasion. So you move by holding, and by tapping, you do evasion moves. It's... It's so fucking cool that, like, they got rid of the guard button in fighting games, like, either holding back or holding a button, and just went fucking crazy. Yeah. They thought they were gods. They thought they could do anything now. Full That's fucking right. dodge build here. Yeah, because it's, like, pseudo-espionage adventure, all of the other buttons are, like, taken up, so they're just like, yeah, the, the sticks are your entire way that you deal with combat and movement. The, the immediate thought I have is just, this is a fighting game using the skate uh, control mapping. <laughs> also, blocking is just attacking when someone else is attacking. Mm -hmm. So how I play fighting games. Exactly. <laughs> blocking is for fucking cowards. Yeah, if you just hit a punch with a punch, that's a block. Anyways, meet our merry band of villains. Why does he look like that? <laughs> the champion from last I can't tell you why he looks like that, but he does. Because he's a main villain. He needs to stand out. That's yeah, right. He's, this, he's probably German or something. Is this guy the son of that guy from um, Wet that just disappears after the first chapter? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. right. Yeah, he is, the, he is the collector's son. Put her in a room. Let's go. So it's a shame that this came out after uh, Tekken 4, because it would have been cool if everyone was just speaking their own language in here. Yeah. Yeah. They they did that a little bit later, but... Why why did he shoot one of his own henchmen and just, <laughs> instead of just telling him this is Because he's a, he's a oh. villain. That's what villains do. Yeah, because he's evil. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so but welcome to Tekken's Nina Williams and Death by Degrees gameplay proper. Of course, the first thing we do when we go to our room is we take the complimentary bottle of water and take it with us. For, for a second, with the outfit and the being on a cruise ship, I started thinking of Night Cry, and that's a very <laughs> different thing. Not quite Night Cry. Not quite. I mean, quite. so far, this feels like the Charlie's Angel video game, but way higher budget. <laughs> yeah. Right, this is the good version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's only got to one angel. Yeah. Uh, three is excessive. If, if the screen gets too cluttered if there's more than one angel. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> exactly. I mean, you would need three controllers. Too many analog sticks. Yeah, you'd have to get, like, a multi-tap, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah uh... You, uh, fucking noobs, got your multi-tap for, uh, Bust, a quiz game. I got it for <laughs> Charlie's Angels PS2 game. <laughs> God, that'd be so cool if it was, like, a... Like, those, like, Ultimate Alliance-style games. But everyone controls an angel, and I guess Charlie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're Diablo likes. Yeah. Yeah, they all got their own abilities. Exactly. But yeah, so this is sort of the, like, espionage part. There's just going to be a lot of, like, codex and stuff. We're just going to read a lot of documents about the story going on. Oh, uh. Chirps. Let me just uh, tell you. Gameplay mechanic for the Charlie's Angels Diablo like. Yeah. Uh. Instead of mana potions, you have that one Farrah Fawcett poster, and you just look at it, and that's how you get your mana back. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so yeah, so also, all the save points are hidden in this game. You get a little marker in the top right letting you know where they are, generally, but you have to go find them. Williams, we've 
You know, games used to be fun. Take chances. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now you got uh, Dark Souls, where it's like, oh, look, I'm a big old fireplace. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they should make you have to find your own optimal fireplace location. Right, you should have to, like, collect, like, resources, like a fucking Boy Scout to put together a fire. <laughs> yeah. So there is a first-person mode. Normally, this is very, um kind of fixed camera. I don't use the first person mode because I find it very jarring to switch back and forth. It's really obnoxious. Can, but it is available. Can, you you can't fight in the first person mode though, right? Uh, you can. It is awkward. <laughs> yeah. Like, because you're, you just, have... you're just straightforward the whole time. You can't like turn really. I cannot yeah. imagine that being anything other than putting it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> It is entirely for exploration and being able to, like, see around corners. Yeah, like, I feel like a first-person mode in this, like, both being primarily third-person, but also it being constantly fixed camera angles, that must be kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, I thought you entered, like, a random encounter, like a JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain why you are all of a sudden not on a cruise ship anymore, and now you're in Greece. Yeah, so this is what the cruise ship looks like. We'll never be back to our room ever again. I don't know how we connect back to our room on this cruise ship, but we have basically now entered like a Greek labyrinth. This is their satellite base. Don't expect much hospitality. Any civilians? Well, this is one of those Disney cruises, so they're like immaculately themed. <laughs> right? Mm. I can't wait for us to get to, like, the onboard comedian that's, like, a sort of Christian, uh, like, ventriloquist. <laughs> yeah, instead, yeah, it's, it's like, uh, instead of, like, I don't know, like, an Ahmed the Undead Terrorist, it's just all of the, like, Tekken characters, but just, again, in, like, sort of offensive accents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the sort of Christian part is the one that very much <laughs> intrigues me. Like, I might go and see just what that means. I don't know how you can make a tiger crawl races, but this guy is a master of the trade. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He had to retire his Eddie Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what the map looks like in this game. It is impossible to navigate. Like, it tells you nothing when you go through. So the X is where you need to go. But the way that anything connects to anything else is not drawn out for you. <laughs> I also like the zoom in noise. It's like, Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. But we will not be using this as much as possible. Just know that our first mission is to go to the freezer, where our um, CIA agent, Jean, currently is. Yeah, that's a cool map. That's like trying to navigate via, like, the Titanic schematics. <laughs> a little bit. Um, so we just got taught how to throw. But if you throw while stealthing, you actually just do, like, a neck break. <laughs> This is one of the few places where it's, like, pretty easy to um, actually do stealth, so I'm taking advantage of that. We'll show off all of the, like, real combat stuff later. When stealth is no longer an option, you mean? Yeah. And that happens a lot. Also, uh, enemies will randomly drop items, so it is kind of like a JRPG. Um, and th there'll be weapons, which you can get guns and uh, melee weapons... And you have limited slots for each of them. Right now, you have one each, which sucks, but, you know. <laughs> I love... Like, she's I, like, nope, I'm in combat now. I gotta saddle up to them. I love how this is stealth mode. Yeah, so it... Yeah, if you are running, it's louder. If you're in combat mode, you're effectively silent, which is very funny to me. But then you do that little, like, saddling, you know, kind of animation. I mean, that, that like, galloping in high heels, very much silent. Yeah. Anyways, we go behind the bar because of the rude service, and we grab a meal kit, which will heal our health. Um, very important to grab as many of those as possible, because uh, you can only heal by eating, or by like going into like various like portions of the story that heal you, but it's infrequent. I love the, you'll see this a lot, is the skeleton of view. Every time you like break a character's bone with an attack, uh, it does that. It's great. Oh, no, Nita, you just killed all the lifeguards. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we jump in the water. We learn that there are dive and swim commands. You kind of control like a submarine. You just have like a, a, a button that sort of propels you forward. And then you control with one stick. But the reason we do this is because we are coming up on our first collectible. It's a gold coin. <laughs> How big is the pool? Would This might take you a, a, a while to find, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, and you don't have any reason to jump into this pool, so... <laughs> I I love the idea of picking up a coin and thinking, what purpose could this serve? <laughs> yeah, so the coins don't actually do anything on your actual playthrough. They are for New Game Plus. Uh, the more of them you collect, you get, like, extra continues on a New Game Plus, as well as extra, um, like, holsters for your various types of weapon. But I do love Nina Williams, like, having, like, the Simpsons internal monologue of money can be exchanged for goods and services. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little like that, yeah. So here we're properly introduced to the submission hold, which we get to do on two guys. Now, the guy on the far side that you see there, um, he's looking back and forth. There's no way to sneak up on him. Like, you can try your best, but you've, you're forced into proper combat now. So you say that's a submission hold being the same kind of hold that she has done on everyone so far, is there any kind of real submission at all? Uh, I mean, you have, like, more proper throws, as it were. Um, we'll see a couple more of those. Um, but now we're into combat proper. Uh, the main thing about combat is multiple types of enemies exist. The ones with, like, the orange walkie-talkies on them will call other enemies, so if you leave them alive, you could theoretically just infinitely fight enemies. They're sort of your first focus. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I noticed when you uh, like mercil mercilessly slaughtered all of those guards outside that you get skill points. Is there like a leveling system? Yes. There's also a critical strike, which great camera angle for our first one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the critical strikes, that second bar under our health is our focus. And when that's uh, f filled up, you get to do critical strikes, which do a lot of damage and sort of leave a, an enemy prone. And that will upgrade along with when we get our skill points. Like, not only do you get skill points to buy moves, but you also level up, which increases your focus meter and your health. She's like, hold up, I gotta grab this granola bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anytime you pick up an item, everyone will stop for you, which I, I think is appreciated. But it's a little more like a calorie mate, I think. But yeah, I'm... It feels almost like... Like, I feel like Netherrealm was, like, looking at this game whenever they made uh, Mortal Kombat 9 with all the X-ray moves and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels <laughs> like it. I was thinking of those, like, uh... uh what are the... Uh, the uh, those sniper games. Uh, sniper Elite. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. I wish it just had, like, a, a transition for the cutscene instead of like having different ones each cutscene <laughs> no well so no the cuts so if you go to a new area and something happens it's a fade otherwise it's just a cut to black <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay I, i'm just waiting around for enemies I, i'm gonna have to fight them eventually <laughs> i thought that was your way of dodging sniper bullets <laughs> no <laughs> so Chirps, I notice when you aren't actively attacking enemies for a while, their health bar becomes red instead of green. Does yes. that signify something? Yeah, that signifies they are coming to attack. Okay. So you kind of know ahead of time which ones are targeting you, and therefore you should focus attacks on them. Um, but, you know, it becomes difficult when they're coming from, like, multiple sides and stuff. <clears throat> <laughs> so so you didn't listen to what the thing said. <laughs> well, the issue is that, like, the direction they're going to throw you sort of isn't, like, telegraphed really well. Yeah, that's when they pin you, it's a lot easier. To... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing, so uh, you see that sometimes, like, the my, my combo changes. So right now, if you look in the bottom left, it shows, like, Nina doing a cool kick. If you hold L1 during that, you enter like a combat mode, which gives you access to your special moves and a new set of combos. Uh, the difference between that and your normal combos is that it does more damage, but you can't block during it. Like if you attack in that mode, you do not auto block against enemies. Okay. So, you know, risk or reward. Oh, I love risky rewards. Yeah. 
Honestly, you dodging out of that guy's way look look cool though. Yeah. Yeah, when when the game is working, this game looks so cool. It's yeah. just unfortunate that it's a little awkward with the control scheme that it has given us. Yeah, yeah. like generally the dodging seems like it's like visually it looks pretty I wouldn't say seamless, but it seems pretty fluid. Yeah. Uh Charles, can I just say this looks like the opposite way of the freezer? <laughs> well, we have to go a lot of directions. We can't actually get into the um, into the body of the cruise ship yet. Because first, we have a sniper's mission. I can't last much longer. I think that guy's, like, just over there playing Time Crisis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we are now in a sniper mission. Um, our MI6 uh, guy... Alan is currently under fire by a bunch of guys. The way this works is the enemies in yellow on your mini-map are attacking him, and the enemies in orange are trying to attack you. So when you see that little danger meter go up above our mini-map, that means that an enemy is targeting us and is getting close to being able to shoot us. If it fills up all the way, they'll be able to attack us until we go into cover. If we go into cover, they forget where we are. You love shooting these guys in the ass. Yeah, the 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 um, the, what is it? The um, the way that the the actual like sniper moves as you try to hold it in place makes it kind of hard to get like a headshot. I start getting better mm. as I get more used to it, but you know, I, I think you were just thinking about asses. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's a it, it's a sure shot kind of target. You know, you can yeah. always go for that one. Yeah, it, you know, it's always in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, there's a headshot. It, th so, headshot, auto kill. Uh, any other shot, it takes about two or three shots to get them, depending on location. See, you're not going for the ass here, and you're completely fucking it up. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't know how that one hit. I think it hit him in the foot somehow. No, it also hit him in the ass. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was just an ass shot. Yeah. It was the JFK kind of thing. It went out of the ass. That's how it went. <laughs> right. So, uh, fun thing. Alan will shoot back inefficiently at any enemy shooting at him. He will not attack any of the guys coming after you. So right now, only enemies are trying to kill us. And I think it's because he's MI6 and um, we're Irish is that he's just kind of letting it happen as it goes. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nina is Catholic and that's like a big <laughs> sticking point. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Okay, do you think Nina Williams has seen Boondock Saints? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. How do you think she became a spy? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You're pretty good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's, that's how you dispose of a sniper rifle if you don't need it anymore. Well, I guess she's, she can just climb down the ladder and get it, I guess, if she needs it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it disappeared. <laughs> what we actually need is this crank handle. So, Terps, I gotta say, for so, a game uh, categorized as espionage action, uh, there sure seems to be a lot of weird survival horror kind of, like, presentation to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's very strange. Again, like, the fixed camera angle and everything definitely, like makes it just feel like sort of a mishmash of ideas. Yeah, I, I feel like a part of it is also just this was the PS2 era, and that's how a lot of these games were. Yeah. Yeah, I can't... I don't think Namco really made any survival horror games, did they? They probably did, but not ones that really come to mind. Like, is Extermination them? I can't remember. Yeah. I cannot imagine Namco Bandai was around in the PS1 and did not make a survival horror game. Yeah, yeah like, there has to be at least one. Yeah, like, it, that's very much my thought, is, like, especially when Resident Evil got really big, like, I have to imagine they made, made at least one that probably bombed completely. Like, the thing about the PS1 was, even if you were just three guys in a garage, once you got that PS1 death kit, you were making a survival horror game. Yeah, oh, just yeah. boot up the Nedia Rosie CD and you're there. 
I mean, like, uh, the first Namco Museum where you play as Pac-Man from a first-person point of view is, like, a little bit survival horror-y. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it does have ghosts in it. Yeah. And what's scarier than ghosts? That's, that's true. It was the original survival horror. That's right. After so, this video, I'm probably going to look up what Namco did and figure out that they did, like, five incredibly well-known survival horror <laughs> games. Yeah, we're going to get owned in the comments. Completely. It's like, actually, Namco made Resident Evil. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this is the only way into the cruise ship is we have to go steal that crank handle so that we can get in through the roof. Well, you should have uh, showed this off before you got the crank handle, Chorps. I know of another way to get into a cruise ship, Chorps. Yeah? Buy a ticket. Huh. You want to know how to get into a cruise ship? Practice. <laughs> <laughs>